tell me this, are we finally in the golden age of video game adaptations? You know, after Arcane and Castlevania and Edge Runners, it was already looking good, but The Last of Us blew me away. And I don't just mean as good television, but as a good adaptation. Now, we are just a couple of episodes in, things may change, it may be too early, but Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey as Joel and Ellie are playing their roles fantastically. Pascal captures Joel's jaded exterior and his soft jelly interior, while Ramsey captures Ellie's simultaneously banterous, intelligent, but not annoying or bratty child character. And that is a difficult balance to strike because sometimes people try to create characters like this and they do it by just making them smarter than everyone else and always teasing and quipping. And it often does not work, it just makes them the self-righteous who constantly gets in the way. But they really managed to capture the ways in which Ellie is Joel's equal. You know, she calls out Joel's crap in the ways that we want to as well. She's resourceful and picks things up quickly, even if, yeah, that does come with the immaturity being a child entails. Like when she asks for a gun and he says, no, of course not. And she goes, fine, I'll just throw a sandwich at them. It's genuinely a funny moment. Her innocence and curiosity does sometimes get them into trouble, but it really importantly contrasts with Joel's jadedness and incuriosity. And it brings these moments of beauty to the series in a world full of ruin. And that contrast motivates both of them to change as people. There's narrative movement to the roles they play in the story and they really managed to capture that. It's that interplay and balance that makes The Last of Us story work so well, and if they didn't, then it wouldn't work. <laughs> and part of what makes the first episode so freaking captivating is I was shocked with how well paced it was. It manages to do this kind of prologue scene in 1968, uh, a kind of uh, four story uh, set during the art break with Joel and his daughter Sarah. And then we've got establishing this new world 20 years later, this post-apocalyptic wasteland, uh, Joel and Tess as people, their role, and then him meeting Ellie, and then them getting out of the city and the impetus for the plot you know, the, the the hook that moves the story forward, all in the space of just over an hour, it just picks you up and takes you with it without feeling rushed. You get all the time you need to really build into the story. But the scene that has undoubtedly stuck with me most is the first one we get in this new post-apocalyptic world. There's a young girl who arrives in Boston exhausted. She's found to be infected and she's killed. Then Joel has to pick up the body of this dead child in the exact same way that we just saw him do with his own dead daughter minutes before. It's this really beautiful parallel, almost wordlessly, as he dumps her body on the fire. And there's this moment of hesitation, this passing expression over Joel's face that tells us so much about him as a character and about this world. If one thing stood out to me about this show, it would be its fantastic visual storytelling. It's mature, it respects the audience to understand things, to catch the subtleties, it doesn't over explain or spend ages on exposition. There are so many subtleties in every scene that you might miss about the characters and world, but the story just moves on and that gives it that rewatching potential, you know? Just the way Pedro Pascal moves as Joel tells you a lot about him as a character. The confident practice way he holds a gun and stands on Ali's knife and remains confident in these tense situations. All of this meant that, and I may be biased because, you know, I love the game, of course I did, but it made for what I thought was one of the strongest opening episodes to a TV show I've seen in a long time, you know, in the same way that like Breaking Bad's first episode feels like a summary of the series to come. It, it perfectly foreshadows everything uh, to be, the dynamics, the characters, uh, and I think the Last of Us show kind of did that as well, that had that wonderful pacing uh, and cyclicalness that, that makes it kind of like, hey, here's what you're gonna get, here's where we're going. And narratively, for people who don't know the story, framing Sarah at the beginning as the main character, following her, was a really smart choice because it, you know, lures you into this false sense of security. The game does the same thing. And it's a bait and switch that makes her death so much more heartbreaking. But more importantly, I also think this is a fantastic adaptation. And uh, there is not enough of that. I sorely missed them after the, the likes of Rings of Power. You will die because of me! And for a lot of people, being a good adaptation means seeing the things that they loved accurately brought to life in a new medium. And I 100% I get that. I totally respect that. 
we love these stories. We love the way that they were, you know, the way they were shot, the way that they were presented, the story as it was. And we want to share that story with more people. And in a way, you know, this TV series is going to be the people's first exposure to that. This is going to be their, their interaction with that story. And we want them to have as positive experience as possible. Being able to share how we imagined the original story with a whole group of new people is really cool. And it feels like the creators respect and value the source material like you do. The scene where Joel takes Ellie back to his apartment and lies down on the couch and she says, what am I going to do? And he says, I'm sure you'll figure it out. And she says, your watch is broken is almost shot for shot taken from the game exactly as is. And I personally thought that was awesome to see because that's such a key beautiful scene. But more than that, a good adaptation is about understanding the source material on a fundamental level and editing it for that new medium, figuring out what needs to be changed, added, or taken away. The biggest question, of course, is that The Last of Us is a video game. There is hours and hours of Joel fighting zombies and trekking through the wilderness that you're not going to want to adapt to a TV show. You, you just, it just would not work. But the show has so far identified those really core moments that capture the vibe and atmosphere of that gameplay and used those beats to motivate the story narratively. I am, you might have guessed, someone who prefers faithful adaptations. I recognize that sometimes you get adaptations which aren't, you know, like Blade Runner being an adaptation of Dangerous Dream of Electric Sheep. Uh, that's still a fantastic film, even if it's not particularly faithful. Uh, but in this case, I really like what they've done with it. But they also added things which totally made sense. We get a lot more from Ellie and Sarah's point of views outside Joel uh, to develop them as people and their stories, but that still stay true to who they are and their role in the story. Now, in the game, you get to wander around Boston as Joel pretty slowly, and you take in this desolate and dark world. There's a lot of environmental storytelling, things you see in the background, conversations you can overhear, signs on the walls, uh, you know, symbols of the fireflies, you get to see executions. But part of the reason that worked in the game was player involvement. You have agency in this, so you're exploring this world organically. And having Joel just wander around Boston and encounter this stuff semi-randomly wouldn't necessarily work for the pacing of a TV show. It doesn't have the same kind of connective tissue that we really look for in the, the opening episode of a, of a show like this. So in adapting all of this, they reworked it into these scenes where Joel and Tess are more active as characters. Uh, Tess gets involved in a hit. Joel trades drugs during one of the executions. Uh, and they connect kind of plot points that maybe weren't that connected in the game, but still absolutely make sense because they're all about establishing this same hopeless, violent world they now live in. One addition I have seen a lot of people raving about is the prologue scene in 1968, where basically two scientists warn about a fungal infection that could wipe out humanity if the earth warmed up a little. And I appreciate that it built on the lore in the game in a very natural way, connecting it to global warming in our modern era, but it was not as strong a hook for me as the story of Sarah and Joel. And it felt a little bit kind of just like telegraphing to the audience that, oh, this is going to be about a zombie infestation everywhere. It's a nice little bit of world building that perhaps makes it a little more terrifying. But for me personally, I thought there were a lot of other much stronger scenes with a lot more um, kind of tension in them that, that draws me through. Why are video game adaptations working now? I think one of the reasons is that we seem to have embraced adult animation a lot more as a medium. You know, um, it, which has always, I think, had a better capacity to reflect the feel of a video game than live action has. For a long time, people have looked down on animation as childish, as dumb, um, as, you know, not really worth watching. Even today, I hear people say that sort of thing, and it's ridiculous. It's ignorant. It's stupid. But you can see how, like, Cyberpunk captured the Sendevistan animation in a much more vivid way than I think live action ever really could have, or how Arcane's animation let it mimic the iconic art style of League of Legends, uh, or Castlevania's fight scenes, which do feel uh, video gamey. They're so well put together, so well animated. People often also missed what we even came to a TV show or video game for, you know? It's not just, oh, we get to see cool fight scenes and swords twirling around and whatever. It's the feeling that we are doing that, that we are 
are doing the cool stuff. And you don't get that really, you know, in a film or a TV show because you're not doing the things. You have no agency. These newer stories seem to respect that and go, okay, that spectacle is awesome, but there needs to be a really involving story. That is the experience that we come for in these mediums. And that's not to say, of course, the video games do not have incredible stories. Some of the most powerful stories I have ever encountered have been in video games, partly because of that, you know, player involvement, that player agency. But The Last of Us is different though. I mean, like it's it's a bit different to Arcane and, and, and Cyberpunk and so on, because I think The Last of Us was designed in a way to feel like a film. Um, it's, it's, it's very grounded. It's got like cutscenes that are animated in ways that feel like a cinematic experience. So it does have that advantage for how it might so easily kind of translate to the screen. Um, but it is also clear that they needed to refine things for the uh, for, the, for the screen. They need to cut things, they need to change things, they need to add things. What makes such a great adaption is that all of those changes are, you know, uh, either so small that they don't really matter, um, or that they build on what is already there in fantastic ways. Uh, or they, you know, take away things that really would not have worked and that we can surely recognize that they wouldn't have worked. I love this so much. I'm going to watch every episode and I'm going to enjoy it. I am also finding it hilarious because season two is going to come out and the people who don't know the games are just going to have like freaking whiplash. <laughs> uh, anyways. What do you guys think of the series so far? What do you guys like? What was your favorite bit? What do you think um, might be missing? What are you afraid could happen potentially? Yeah, stay nerdy and I'll see you in the future.